Sometimes I feel like not knowing what to paint can really block me from creating, so a few weeks ago I decided to make some really simple still life arrangements with fruit that I could use for when I don't really want to think too deeply about what I want to paint, but I just want to sit down and practice. I had some of this colourful cardstock that I wanted to use as the background and I think this helped make some really cool vibrant photos with contrasting colours and I made my arrangements really simple because I wanted these references to help me do quick studies. I've put the reference photos that I took on an Instagram post so feel free to use them yourself as well. I'll link my Instagram below and do tag me if you end up painting them because I love seeing your art so much, it honestly makes my day. Today I'm using the Strathmore Artist Tiles and Gouache from Holbein and Windsor and & Newton and I taped the paper to some cardboard so that I could move it around easily. All my materials will also be linked below. So today I wanted to chat a bit about my process for painting these lemons which will also hopefully help you with painting them or any of the reference photos that I'm sharing and also talk a bit about art block in general and my thoughts and experiences around that. So after having done a very simple sketch of the general outline and shadow shape, I start with painting the background first and I try to do this only with one layer of paint because with gouache it's really hard to mix up the exact colour paint again and I want the background to be as even as possible. So I go in with a bit of a thicker paint mixture to make sure it's opaque and even and you can't see the paper beneath it or lots of strokes of paint. I then do the shadows which again I want them to be even in colour so I lay down the paint in the same consistency as the background and neither of these colours are a perfect match to the reference photos but that isn't really my priority. I always say that when you're painting you don't necessarily want a perfect match to the colours you see but more so the value so how dark or light a colour is. That way you can still make the shadows look like real shadows even if they aren't the exact same colour as the photo um, or you can also change up the colours when you're painting as long as you're following the values you will still get that depth and accuracy and lifelike effect. Then I start with the subject of the painting, so in this case the lemons, and I really want to retain that vibrancy of the yellow. So I go in with a bright yellow, and I'd say this is the mid-tone of the lemons because it's not the darkest colour you can see on the lemon, so the parts in shadow, nor is it the brightest highlight. Generally this is the order I like to do my paintings in with gouache. So after I put down the mid-tone, I can work on the shadows and on the highlights. And again, this yellow isn't the exact yellow of the photo, but I wasn't aiming for that realism in colour. I really like painting with vibrant colours and I like the effect it gives. It reminds me a little bit of pop art. Um, this lemon piece is a bit more graphic and illustrative versus more painterly, which is the approach I had with some of the other pieces I did. And I like playing around with that and experimenting. I also really love the reflection of the blue background on the shiny lemon skin. I think it created a really cool effect that I love to capture with paint, so that's another reason why I like to use that colour cardstock. So I'm guessing that if you love creating art in any form, you've probably experienced art block before. That feeling where there is just something that stops you from picking up your materials and creating. And I feel like before I started to take my art more seriously and want it to be my career, it felt like that feeling of art block would come and I would just stop doing art for ages, maybe weeks or months, until I got the urge or inspiration to create again. But in the past year or so, I've wanted to take my art more seriously and want it to be the centre of my life rather than just a hobby or something I do on the side, which is what I'm working on to make a career out of this, but that's a story for another video. Anyway, since I've shifted gears, I have experienced art block much more frequently over the past year. And normally the feeling creeps in and it starts with not knowing what to paint, but sometimes it expands and I start to question what I'm doing and then I start thinking my art isn't worth making and that feeling can spiral. Like getting to that feeling of why bother painting, this isn't impacting anyone positively, who cares what I make, those kinds of intense feelings, uh, they're just not conducive to anything positive. But I've learned to recognise those initial feelings and the way to kind of go against them is literally to make more art. And so having these easy reference photos help me not not overthink what I'm going to do, what I'm going to create, and it just kind of gets me to the process of sitting down and painting way more quickly, which is what I want. I want to be in that flow state of not overthinking and just doing, because right now I'm in a stage where I want to keep creating to develop 
and discover my artistic language, my art style, and having frequent blocks that turn into self-doubt is really counterproductive to my mission as a whole. I'm really curious to hear about other people's experience with creative block and actually would love to know what action steps you take to try and minimize it or get over it. Like for me, having the folder ready with really good and simple references, especially ones I've taken myself, helps me with getting started a lot quicker, which obviously helps me then just make more art and not linger in my feelings too much. So I mentioned this before, but the way I approach this lemon half is a good example of the order I lay down the different layers of gouache when I approach a painting. So I start off with the mid-tone, so that's the kind of yellow mustardy um, colour for the inside. And then when it's dry, I add the highlights and shadows. And for this, I'm mixing that original colour with either more white to make it lighter or more yellow and blue to make it darker. I normally use Prussian blue to darken my colours, but that depends on what I'm doing. And I've kind of trained my mind to think in layers when painting with gouache now. It's not the only way to use this paint, but it's the way I like doing it. And that's the beauty of gouache because it's so opaque, you can layer it so easily. Um, consistency wise, the paint is not super thin or watery, but kind of like a melted butter consistency. That way you can really see the color pigment when layering it on top of other colors, especially darker colors. And when I put in the white highlights, that tends to be a bit thicker in consistency. So you can really get that bright white effect. And hopefully you can notice this, but I'm not using many different colors and I can still achieve that depth. It's all about having those contrasting darker and lighter colors, but not necessarily having to mix a ton of different hues or a big range of different colors. Um, simplicity is definitely key. Then I paint on the very bright highlights last and I love how this really brings everything together and the reason why I love painting fruit so much is because I think it helps me practice different textures really easily and I also find it relatively simple to do with very satisfying end results and I think feeling satisfied and positive about what you create is such a contributing factor to being consistent with painting but having said that I have also set myself some bigger art goals recently that I really want to dive into which will have me expanding outside of my comfort comfort zone but I had to break this mini art block I was feeling and comfort zone painting always helps with that. So here I had to paint over the shadow a bit and because it's so hard to mix the exact same colour again I ended up having to repaint the whole shadow instead of just tweaking the little patch that I wanted to and then the shadow looked a bit darker than the other shadows um, on the lemons so I ended up having to repaint all the shadows and it's just something to be aware of if you're doing more even areas of gouache where you want the area to look really smooth and uniform sometimes you have to end up repainting the whole area completely if you do have to make a small amendment just to get everything even but also remember to let it dry fully to see what the final colour will look like because gouache does shift in colour. When it dries, so darker colours do dry lighter and lighter colours dry darker. And I think I'm making it sound a bit more difficult than it actually is. Don't let these qualities of the paint stop you from using gouache because with practice you do begin to learn how it behaves. And even though I've been painting with gouache for some time now, I still can do things that I then have to amend. But I think that's just part of the process of making art. Um, and it is a very fun medium. So don't let this put you off. And then comes the satisfying tape peel part that we all enjoy, although it was kind of annoying because I didn't stick the tape down properly and the paint leaked under it. But apart from that, I really love how these lemons turned out and it was a nice quick practice. And I liked how the style of them kind of turned out too, the more crisp lines and slightly pop art, cartoony feel. Um, for the little studies of fruit that I did, I was definitely a bit looser and more painterly. And this is what I love about experimenting with fruit studies. You can try out different styles and achieve such different effects. I really hope this was useful to see and please feel free to use my reference photos, the ones that I posted on Instagram, and I can't wait to see what you paint. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!